office building. Currently on Lower Wacker Drive. This is where the infamous car chase scene from the Blues Brothers was filmed. On to beautiful Lakeshore Drive we go. All the way up to Lincoln Park. Greetings friends. Welcome back to Mike Allen from Chicagoland. Broadcasting today from City Chicago in the Lincoln Park neighborhood. Heading to the Chicago History Museum to view an exhibit that has been on display for quite a while now and one I have not seen since I was probably in junior high. Has to do with uh, Abraham Lincoln. So I'll go in and visit that and a host of other uh, exhibits that this place has to offer. So please come and join me and let's get started. Front entrance to the Chicago History Museum is right over here off of Clark Street. Starting on the second floor of the Chicago History Museum. There's Chicago White Sox drinking glass, 1988. That is the old school logo from my childhood. Wrigley Field Diamond Dust, 2003. Another thing I noticed there was Oscar Mayer chopped ham and cheese, circa 1960. So here's an old Chicago L streetcar, Southside Rail Transit Authority. It's like they're not letting anybody inside the L car, but we can get a peek. Chairs look to be a lot more comfortable, and the train cart seem to be a bit more spacious than they do now. Right in front of the Elkhart is a brief history. Here's what it looked like back in the day. Some other pictures here. So I just learned that the Chicago L was completed in 1897. I had no idea that it was uh, over 100 years old. Learn something new every day. This is a wooden model of Fort Dearborn, built in 1803 which was a United States military fort that protected settlers from uh, the natives and helped spur the growth of the Western United States and Chicago as well. Set right along here, representation of the Chicago River. And it also overlooked Lake Michigan. It's a picture of what Chicago looked like. 1845. There's a model representation of some of their warehouses from the 19th century. Some history of Fort Dearborn. It was destroyed during the War of 1812 and then rebuilt in 1816 and continued to be used all the way until it was permanently closed in 1836 after the military abandoned Fort Dearborn. Some information about the Oscar Mayer Company. Oscar Mayer started here in Chicago. He was one of the first to put his name on his product. And many sausage makers were not doing that back in the day. He was the first. And apparently the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile started in 1936. This display here talks about the stockyards, Union stockyards, and it's history in Chicago as the meatpacking capital of North America. Now I remember learning about Upton Sinclair's The Jungle when I was a kid and it was a book about the seedy underbelly of the meatpacking industry and basically the stories I, I have not read the book but the stories I've heard about it just absolutely turned my stomach and it helped bring about changes to the to the meatpacking industry and a lot more safety to our uh, food and the things that we eat. 
No kidding, Chicago once made more beer than Milwaukee. It's interesting. There's a cast iron brewery refrigeration panel, circa 1900. Some old cell phones made by Motorola, one from 1988, the other from 2004. Pretty sure I owned that particular phone at one point in time. Motorola is credited with inventing the very first cell phone in 1983. And this is the Chicago Water Tower, which sits along Michigan Avenue and currently stands to this day. This a picture of what Chicago looked like in 1858 before the fire. And some of the ruins of the city, 1871. This is between Wabash and Michigan Avenues, looking north from Congress Street. There's a map of the city, and in the pink is where the fire spread. It started here on the south side and made its way north. They got some sports memorabilia on display here too. Let's go check it out. Picture, uh, picture of Shoeless Joe Jackson, known for throwing the 1919 World Series in the infamous Black Sox scandal. Picture of the White Sox celebrating the 2005 World Series title. Programs from the 1945 and 1938 World Series, of which the Cubs were a participant. There's the 1929 and the 1935 programs in the World Series. Official program from the 1959 World Series, which featured the White Sox. Looks like they have on display the NFL's Man of the Year Award which is named after Bears legend, Walter Payton. There's a picture of Payton right there. Super Bowl 20 program, along with the famous Super Bowl Shuffle album, which I used to own, but don't anymore. You can easily find that song on YouTube. Team picture of the very last Chicago Bulls squad to win an NBA title, 1997-98. Seated in the front row there, the big three, Rodman, Jordan, and Pippen. It's one of the baseballs used in game one of the 2016 World Series. Picture of the Cubs celebrating their 2016 title, which ended a 108 year drought. Some information about the 1893 World's Fair and the introduction of the Ferris wheel. The theme of the 1893 World's Fair was the Columbian Exposition because it was the 400th anniversary of Columbus discovering the New World. A small section of the museum dedicated to Chicago's history with the blues. Nobody leave this place without singing the blues. Picture of Muddy Waters, 1960. Amplifier and guitar of former Chicago blues man Floyd Jones. Poster advertising BB King and Ray Charles. And I definitely hope to get to Memphis someday and explore the musical history of that great city and a lot of the people that came up from there. There's a scientific notebook from when the first nuclear chain reaction occurred here in Chicago. Now entering the reason I came here was for Abraham Lincoln. This here's a plaster of Lincoln's face that was created a few months before he passed away. And I'm sitting next to this bed right here. This is Lincoln's deathbed where he passed away. And because he was six foot four, he had to lay at an angle as this bed was too, too small for him. Yeah, it is something else to be standing here in front of Lincoln's deathbed for the first time in about 30 years. The last time I was here, this was uh, on display on the outside. Now it's encased in glass. Probably to protect it from the elements if I had to guess. Here's a gold watch given to Abraham Lincoln right before he departed for Washington, D.C. in 1861. Next to that are slave shackles. 
circa 1855. Sign says this is here to signify the fact that a lot of southern states succeeded from the Union after Lincoln's election. There's a painting of Abraham Lincoln, 1860, which is said to be based upon a photograph taken of him. There's a depiction of Abraham Lincoln with Ulysses S. Grant and Secretary of War Stanton planning the attack on the Army of the Virginia, led by Robert E. Lee, circa 1864. Cool here, a panorama of the city of Chicago in 1858, 13 years before the fire. So much of the city at that time was made of wood, especially several of the buildings, which kind of set the course in motion for the fire to occur. Some of the household items that could be found in homes back in 1871. Now the O'Leary family get blamed for the start of the Chicago fire, but in actuality, nobody really knows how the fire started. Although it was started in her barn. So here's a fire alarm telegraph box. 1871. Basically all these boxes are locked throughout the city of Chicago and only trusted citizens were given keys to open them and sound the alarm for when there was a fire. There's a what Chicago is, Fire Department helmet from 1871. Fireman's watch from 1868. So the guy downstairs was telling me that the original Chicago History Museum run by the Chicago Historical Society, in fact, burned down in the fire, so they lost quite a few of their artifacts. Some artifacts discovered in the fire, two pocket watches fused together, a bunch of screws being held together there, and also this was an old street sign on the O'Leary Street. There's a broken pocket watch burn in the fire along with some silverware that fused together. This is an even bigger pile of nails that fuse together. Back downstairs now, and in this room is a bunch of diorama interpretations of Chicago. This was from 1860, and this is the bridge that connected Rush Street over the Chicago River. And this is a depiction of the Courthouse Square in 1865. Pretty much all of this burned in the Chicago Fire. A depiction of the Chicago Fire along the lakefront. This is the Saganosh Tavern in Chicago in 1833, right when the town was established. And this tavern was one of the first social gathering places for the townspeople. And the World's Columbian Exposition, 1893 World's Fair in Jackson Park. Out of all the historical events that have occurred in Chicago, this is Probably the one that I wish I could have seen with my own two eyes. None of these buildings are still standing, unfortunately, except for the Museum of Science and Industry. It's the only one left. There's an image of Old Comiskey Park, a place I never got to visit, so it's really cool seeing something like this. One of the things I found fascinating about the architecture of this ballpark was the fact that the outfield had an upper deck similar to what Tiger Stadium was like. 
And I also had the exploding scoreboard courtesy of Bill Veck. Yeah, it was the oldest park in baseball when it was torn down in, after the 1990 season. And near the front of the building, they have a bunch of historical pictures related to Chicago. It's a picture of the Bears playing at Wrigley Field when they won the championship in 1963. This is where they played for 50 years until I believe 1970 or 1971 when they moved to Soldier Field. This is Dr. King coming to Chicago in 1966 in his fight for fair housing. Pictures of the Great Blizzard of 1967, which my parents have told me several stories about. I think my mom said she was off school for a week. Former Mayor Richard J. Daly's funeral procession in 1976 through his home neighborhood of Bridgeport on the south side. Ah, uh, yes, the disco demolition. There could be a whole display about that night here at this museum. Harold Washington being sworn in as mayor in 1983. First African-American mayor of the city of Chicago. Pretty sure that's Jane Bird looking on. She was uh, replaced by Harold Washington as mayor of Chicago. And Michael Jordan with his father after he won his very first title with the Bulls in 1991. So thank you for joining me today as I walk through the Chicago History Museum. Saw Lincoln's deathbed and a whole assortment of items related to Chicago history. Stuff that I learned about, stuff that I already knew, but hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something along the way. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. There's other ways you can help me out in growing the channel. I'll put links down in the description below. Anyways, this is Mike Allen from Chicagoland, signing off from the Chicago History Museum in Lincoln Park neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. I'll be back next week with another video, but until then, don't you go changing.